In this video, I'm gonna talk about five must-have pieces of gear you should have as a sports videographer. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Pete here. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, y'all. My name is Pete Gottschalk, content producer for Major League Baseball. And in this video, as titled, I wanna go over some piece of gear that you might not have, but I think would take your sports videography and your content to the next level. And now these aren't gonna be pieces of gear that are so obvious, such as like a camera or a lens, because obviously you need some sort of camera, but these are gonna be more things that supplement your main camera or, or your lens or things like that. So I hope you guys can get some value out of this, but without further ado, let's do this. Now, first off, some of y'all might have some variation of this and some of you might not. It is going to be one of the cheapest things in your camera bag or your kit, but it is also going to be the most crucial and that is going to be a monopod with feet. This is the one I use. It's like a Siriu. I can't, I don't even remember the brand. It's right there. That's the brand I use. Siriu, I don't know. I, but it's been good for me. I've shot like 200 games on this. This is the only monopod I've had since I've been at MLB. Um, some of you might have a monopod. You can get really cheap ones on Amazon, but make sure if you're doing video, get one with feet. And what I mean by feet are, is this. You need ones with feet because that will take your content to the next level. It will make your shots a little more stable than ones without feet. This might seem obvious to some of you, but if you're new to the game, this is crucial. Also, maybe if you're switching from photography to video or you wanna get better at video, get a monopod with feet. For photo, this isn't necessary at all, but if you wanna do steady pans, tilts, things like that, a monopod like this will help you a lot. Make sure it has feet, that's the only thing. Some good brands are this one, um, this was like 250 I think, but Manfrotto is probably my preferred brand. It's the tripod that I have as well. They make great stuff. We use their monopods at Georgia and that one actually has like a tilt up down. This one does not, but this one's perfect for me and I need a new one soon probably. <laughs> Second piece of gear I do believe would help y'all and you might not have one is an ND filter. Now an ND filter, if you're not aware, is basically a sunglass for your lens. Why would you need that? In video, if you want to adhere to the shutter rule, where you're doubling your frame rate and that's what the shutter is, the motion blur rule. You're gonna need one of these in a lot of scenarios whenever there's harsh, harsh daylight. It's gonna make your shots look a lot better, in my opinion. Now, essentially the whole purpose of an ND filter is to be able to allow you to not bump up your shutter or your aperture. You don't have to compromise there. It's gonna give you that couple stops so you can still have that F2.8 in the middle of the day without making your shutter super high or vice versa. This one is variable, it's off Amazon. And what I means by variable is you can twist it and it gets darker and lighter. So this one's perfect, I love this one. I, it was like $40 I think on Amazon. This is the one I use for vlogging. This is my Tamron 17 28 on my vlogging setup on my Sony. I just twist it on, it screws on, and there you go. And you can, it's variable like that, it's perfect. And it also protects the front of the lens, so there's another added benefit for you. A lot of cameras, like the one I'm shooting this video on, the C70, will have it built in. Those are the nicer cameras, the cinema cameras, things like that. But if you want good motion blur and you don't wanna have to crank your shutter or aperture up, then get one of these ND filters. Another piece of gear that I use all the time, and if you're familiar with my vlogs, my day in the life stuff at MLB when I shoot a game or events, I use this a lot, and it is an SD card reader to lightning and that basically means you can put your card in plug it in your phone and then you can access your photos or your videos on your phone you can you can download them onto your camera roll and then you can send them out immediately or post them immediately whatever you need to do highly recommend this in sports if you're working with a lot of athletes athletes sometimes want stuff immediately and they don't know what they want until they see it so being able to shoot something show it to them on the camera be like yo that's dope send it to me this is crucial for that we use this in a live content factor. So like I take my card out of my C70, the camera you're watching this video on, and then I put it in here and it goes straight in my camera roll. In the camera rolls app on Canon, I think maybe Nikon, it should automatically pop up on import if you're in your camera roll app. But on Sony, you need to go to the files app and then it should pop up as untitled and it should pop up and you can save the videos from there after you select them. This thing is great, highly recommend. And it is also the only one I've had since I've been at MLB for two years, which is remarkable test of durability. The fourth piece of gear, and this is kind of two pieces of gear that I think a lot of you might not have, but you might need is a puffer and some lens wipes. Now this is gonna seem hypocritical because I currently don't know where my puffer is and I ran out of lens wipes but 
uh, <laughs> and I'll show you a clip right here where I really could have used it and this happens a lot when I'm vlogging but basically what a puffer is is you can puff it and it blows air and it'll get the sensor dust off your camera and sensor dust pops up a lot in daylight scenarios in the sky maybe on jerseys certain things and it's really annoying and it's really hard to get rid of especially in video so if you're a videographer make sure you have one of these puffers I'm gonna need to get a new one they're like five dollars though and then lens wipes are obvious if your lens is dirty if you're in a scenario where your lens is getting wet lens wipes are crucial you don't want that dried stuff that dried dust or, or condensation on your lens so make sure you carry some of those around as well those are also very cheap you can buy them on Amazon last but certainly not least and I can't believe I'm even putting this in this video is a road mic or any type of, of mic it's baffling to me how much many people I see in the industry, high up in the industry, negate and just totally neglect their audio setup. I see a lot of people shooting without mics and using the internal body uh, microphones and that's okay in certain scenarios but when you're in a loud stadium or a setting like a sports event, you're gonna need a mic. Don't neglect that because your audio is a big deal. Audio is half the game everyone and I can't believe I see so many people just shooting without a road mic. I understand that everyone has different financial capabilities but if you're spending a couple hundred or a thousand, two thousand dollars on a lens and a, and a, and a body, I believe you should be able to work some kind of space in there for even a $50 microphone. It doesn't have to be Rode. There's Deity, there's other options that you can use. There's the, the cheaper Rode Mic Go version of this. You can get mics for $50, you can get mics for $200. Don't skimp on your audio. It's, it's way more important than you think if you're a professional. Anyways, that concludes today's video. I hope you guys took some value from it. If you have any questions, or concerns let me know below and if you have other pieces of gear that you think would help videographers let me know in the comments below finally thanks for watching this video everyone make sure you like and subscribe and i'll see y'all in the next one